You're good. Are we working? Yes, you're up. Are you sure? Yes. I want to welcome those watching my YouTube tonight. And I want to give you this flyer. Check this out. I don't know if you can see it or not. There you are. Look at that. Real close. Benito Cordova. Evangelist Benito Cordova is going to be with us November the 10th uh, at 10 o'clock service. We invite you to come out. Amen. I call him the Mexican Snoop Dogg. He's going to be here at our church. Amen. He raps. He sings. He uh, does Spanish songs. He's a recording artist who's won some awards and different things in New Mexico to, for his for his music, but he's also a powerful uh, preacher and evangelist, a man who lives in Española, New Mexico, and he's going to be with us November the 10th. He's a good friend of mine, a good brother in the Lord, amen. He's not bad looking either, amen. He's a, he's a pretty handsome guy, and he's going to be here with us November the 10th, so we invite you to come out and be a part. Amen. We invite you actually to our services, those who are in the area, those who live in Pueblo. We invite you to come out uh, either to our Thursday night service at 7 o'clock or Sunday morning, 10 a.m. And we have a Sunday evening. We're one of the only churches in the city, or a few churches, I should say, that actually have an evening service on Sunday night. And so we invite you to come out to that at 6 o'clock. Amen. And to also just be a part of what God's doing. We have our Mexican dinner this Saturday. For those of you that are out there and are business owners, or you work on Saturday and you've got employees there with you, uh, we, we want to invite you to, to, uh, to uh, order some Mexican dinners. On Saturday, we deliver. It's $8 a, per, $8 a, a dinner. And uh, uh, so we, we, I just want to put that out there as well, amen, because we do that every first Saturday of the month. So that's our literal uh, commercials for those who watch my Facebook, amen. But I want to talk about, well, let me, let me read in Matthew chapter 6 tonight. I'm going to read the scripture real quick, and then we're going to pray, and then we'll get into the word tonight. Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 12, it's coming, it's reading a portion of the Lord's Prayer tonight. And it says this, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Amen? And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you tonight, and I thank you for the Word of God, that the Word of God is powerful and alive and sharper than any two-edged sword tonight, God. Father, Lord God, and tonight I pray that your word would even penetrate our hearts tonight. Father, Lord God, that you would do a work inside of us, Father. You said in your word that, in, 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 Father, that your word is like a fire and your word is like a hammer, Lord, to forge our hearts to become who you want us to be, God. Father, pound us out tonight. Do whatever you need to do in our lives. God, change us. Make us into your image and into your likeness tonight, God. As we surrender to your word, as we surrender to the Holy Spirit tonight, Father, I thank you. Anoint my lips, my mind, and my heart tonight, Father, to minister as a very oracle of God. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Thank you, Lord. I, am, uh, I entitled this message tonight, Forgive Who? Forgive Who? Question mark. He said, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, amen? Tonight I want to talk on the subject of forgiveness, amen? The subject of forgiveness tonight. Are you in, your, are you in Matthew chapter 6? Verse number 12 is where we were at, but I want to read it to you from the Amplified Version. I like to look at different versions and this is what the Amplified said. It just kind of expounds on, a little bit on what we just read in the King James. It says, and forgive us our debts as we uh, have forgiven our debtors. And this is what it says in the parentheses in the Amplified. It expounds the meaning of it, the Greek text of it. It says, forgive us our debts 
as we forgive our debtors, and in parentheses it says, letting go of both the wrong and the, resent the resentment. Letting go of both the wrong and the resentment. And I wanted to talk about this forgiveness. I wanted to talk about this because uh, over the last week or so, I've been kind of just hearing things and he hearing the, the Lord talk about forgiveness. And tonight, um, I was thinking about it a lot because, because uh, you know, so many people as Christians, you know, we, we, uh, we love the Lord and we're serving the Lord and we, we're doing what we can. We're going to church and reading our Bible and praying and stuff. But this area of forgiveness is something that, I mean, we could preach on this every service and have an altar call every service because there's so much opportunity out there for every Christian to be offended, to be hurt, to be angry with somebody every day. I was thinking about it and I said, well, you know, I could just ask somebody, are you married? If you're married, good opportunity to be offended and hurt every single day. Well, you didn't do this and you've made me feel and you, I felt, you know, I mean, or whatever. Or do you have kids? You know, good, good opportunity for you to be offended all the time. Because kids, as they said, say the darkest things. Kids do the dumbest things sometimes. And sometimes kids respect and, and honor people, you know, others more than they do their own parents. And sometimes even as parents, we can get resentful and we can get hurt and we can get angry with our own kids. And there's been many times in my lifetime as a Christian that I've had to forgive my own children. Hmm? Hello, are you guys here? I hear you breathing, man. Huh? We have to forgive our kids at times because they just do some dumb things, man. And they, 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 they you know, and they, and they hurt us, you know. I think one of the biggest things is that people, the kids will say, well, you know, you weren't the mom that I needed you to be growing up. Or you weren't the dad that I needed you to be growing up. And this and that, you know what I mean, or whatever and that. You know, and think nothing else. I was just letting you know how I feel. You know what I mean? But don't realize you go home and search your heart to see, was I that bad? Hello? Yeah. Huh? But did I do that wrong? Did I not raise them right? Did I? And sometimes they don't understand where we come from. They don't understand. You, you know, I got saved. I was a sinner. I was lost. Yeah. And now I'm saved. And now I'm trying to serve God and do my best. And, you know, you know, maybe makeup time that I've lost and, you know, different things and, you know, and, 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 but our kids, they don't see that. I think there was one major time where I spanked my son, you know, and I don't really even remember why or what would happen, but there was one time that I spanked my son and I kind of, you know, I kind of backhanded him and it gave him a charlie horse in the butt. And I'll never live that day down. I beat him. You know what I mean? I was an abusive dad, and I beat him and this and that because of one, one time, you with me, that something happened that he views, you know, and he teases with his kids, but oh, I was beat as a kid, and this and that, and all this, and I'm like, you lying devil, you don't even spank one time. And that was, you know, I mean, not even really a spanking. But, uh, but he'll tell everybody, you know, oh, I'm going to tell his kids stories, man. They could, dad. Grandpa, my dad said, oh, you don't listen to a word your dad says. He's lying. Never even spanked and this and that. Actually, he was a very good kid. We never really even had to spank him as a kid, so he's a liar. You know? But but when they say stuff or, or, or people at work, you know what I mean? They gossip or people at church. You know? There's probably more offense in church than there is at work. Because at work, at least you expect it. At church, you expect better. Hmm? But we don't expect better of our own selves. Though. That's where kind of you're going to see this message kind of turn to that. Because we do expect a lot from everybody else but ourselves. Yeah. You with me? We'll be like, oh, I can't believe they were late. I can't believe they did this. They didn't do what they said they were going to. But you don't see how many times you've done that. Yeah. You with me? He said it in that prayer. Forgive us our debts, Lord. Forgive us as as we 
forgive those who trespass against us. In other words, God, forgive me the way I forgive him. Forgive me the way I forgive my wife. Forgive me the way I forgive my kids, God. You know how I'm quick to forgive, Lord, or whatever. You know, you know what I mean? I was thinking, I said, you know, uh, 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 one of the hardest things I think for a pastor is, is that a lot of people don't see what we go through. Right. All you hear about is what the people go through that left the church. Hmm? Oh, they were offended, and pastor said this, and pastor done that, or pastor Susan did this, and they offended, so they just left. And you think, oh my gosh, they're such bad pastors. <laughs> and you don't think, you know, how many people have, how many times, you know, because they're never going to, like I told you, my son earlier, was spent maybe one time that I remember. You know, I'm sure there might have been some other, but nothing major, you know. But he'll tell you he was abused as a kid, you know. And and and, and people that come to the church, you, you they will never tell you the 200 times that we went out of our way to buy their baby diapers, to pick them up for church, to go to the hospital, to do their funeral, to marry them. Yeah. Hello. To take them out to eat. You with me? To whatever it is that we ever done. Buy their kids all Christmas presents because they didn't have a dime. They don't tell you about all the blessings. Tell you about the one time that the pastor rebuked us and we got mad and left the church. You with me? And, and they don't realize, hey, wait a minute, maybe you offended me. Yet. Hello, is this anyone? Yeah. Do we have people here tonight? <laughs> huh? The one time that you did something or whatever and they got hurt, offended, and all this stuff, and they don't they don't realize what they've done to people. No. You with me? Yeah. They don't realize, man, I hurt my pastors. Yeah. You with me? And it's funny because I was dealing I was writing this and, 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 and getting ready for this message and stuff. And and then you know what? We see somebody at the mall. Somebody at the mall that left our church. Somebody at the mall that I talked to you about earlier. And I said, you know, this individual was an individual that we prayed for for I don't know how many years. You with me? I think they got saved three years ago. And our, we've been in ministry 23 years. So I think as long as they, for at least 20 years, we prayed for this individual to get saved. He was always, at least once a week, they were in our prayers. For them and for the situation, for even the business they were involved in, shut it down, Lord. Yeah. And for all these years, you know what I mean? And 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 try and befriend them, try and invite them, and this and that. And, you know, it wasn't until the individual got sick, found themselves crying and not knowing where to turn or where to go, they found themselves in this parking lot here, not in the pastures that they're under right now, in this parking lot here. The Holy Spirit does not make mistakes. Right. The Holy Spirit don't, oh my God, I said 10, 10, trail, or, or, or Troy, I meant Elizabeth. <laughs> oh my God, what a, what a mistake I made. I sent him to the wrong church, now what are we going to do? <laughs> well, I'll let him go and they'll bring themselves out, and in two years they'll go over there to the other one anyway. You don't make mistakes. Right. God knows where their prayers came from. God knows where that, 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 that you with me? Yeah. And, and, and then they come, and man, for two years, man, just had the hardest time with the individuals. Man, it's like, man, he's like a rebellious kid. You love your kids. You love them all. But it's like that one that just, man, like a thorn in their flesh. Every little thing you throw this, why? I don't want to. I'm not going to. Huh? Yeah. Everything we did, everything we tried, just rebelled against, man. And it was almost a blessing when they left. Because it was like, you know what, my heart is so burdened with you and you know, with your offenses and with you just being rebellious. Maybe it's better that you leave. Yeah. You know? And and but anyway, this individual, I seen him tonight, that the, the hard part about it is when they went away from our church, they said that they were they, they didn't agree with the teachings that I was teaching. I don't know if you understand this or not. My teachings are from the Bible. Right. right. From the Bible. 
What is it about my teachings that you don't like? You with me? Is it the way I present things? Because I know I'm not like other people, and I know they're not like me. You with me? It's like somebody comparing you uh, 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 with their old girlfriend. Yeah. Hello. Mm -hmm. That's the only way I can try and explain it to you. It's like, you ladies, if you have a better husband or a boyfriend, well, you're never going to amount to what my, my, my girlfriend in high school, she was great, man. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Man, she was like this, she looked like this, mouth like this, was beautiful, she treated me like a king, and all then I got you. <laughs> and then when they divorce you, and they walk away from you and leave you with three kids and no money, yeah. then they say, you know, you were no good anyway. And they start saying bad things about you to people out there who are going to believe every gossip and every lie. Yeah. They're not going to believe the truth. They want a juicy piece of gossip, like a juicy steak, man. They don't want a baloney. Yeah. We don't want the truth. We want a juicy, fat piece of steak, gossip that we can believe and listen to. We knew them pastors were no good anyway. Yeah. All them pastors are the same. All they do is hurt everybody, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but but you know that, that that's that's all good, and yeah, I understand. Sometimes people just don't get along and all this stuff. But it's like, but don't talk about the doctrine. Right. Don't talk about my teachings. Right, right. My teachings come from the Word of God. Right. You with me? I preach the Word. I preach what's in there. I don't preach my opinions and my feelings because you know what my feelings are. You know, my, you with me, the way I thought, if I wanted to be, you know, we'd, we'd go gangster on you. You with me? Can't forgive them, be forgiven, as you watch and see <laughs> what happened in that house over there on the east side. I don't know, it just blew up. All the family, they burned to death. I don't know what happened. Hmm? Just, huh? Yeah, you know what I mean? That's a retaliation. You know, that's the feeling and this and that. No, but we don't do that. Why? Because we're Christians. Because the doctrine, because the teachings, because the Bible says for me to forgive you. Hmm? The Bible says for me to, what did it say in the Amplified? To stop feeling angry at you. To stop feeling resentment towards you. You with me? I seen this individual, I didn't really see him, I just knew they were there. And they would not dare look my way or come over here where I was. You with me? But it was just like, and I thought, you know, I, mean, I don't have no feelings or anything, but it's just like, I'm not going to go out of my way either. Right. You with me? But I was like, man, God, this is hard. Hello, I know for you it's easy because you're all softos and you're all cloud nine or the, playing your harps and in the spirit. But know. but in reality, you know what I mean? For you, you know, and I know sometimes even my kids or my wife or others are looking at me, how in the world does he forgive these people? How can he just, why don't he just tell them? Why don't he just, you know, don't let them come back to the church because they hurt you, they did this and they did that, and yet God calls me to forgive them. And I know that if they walked in that door and repented, I know what I'd do. And I wasn't be punching them in the face. They'd probably be shaking their hand and embracing them and say, I forgive you, man. Let's move on. Let's go forward. And sometimes that's, that's, and you don't think that's hard, though? You don't think that's hard for me to do? When I come from that lifestyle I come from? You with me? To want to just, you know, show them. You with me? I'm comfortable. You know, sometimes as a pastor, it makes you feel like you're the biggest wussy in the city. Yeah. Hmm? Biggest coward. Because you're dependent on forgiveness. Mm -hmm. You're dependent on, well, just, I, I can't make you. I just got to serve Jesus. Hmm? Right. You with me? And, and, and yet to watch people, you know, come through our ministry and then, and then to turn and, and say hurtful things about us and, 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 and never mention one thing that we did for them. Hmm? And we've helped so many people in this city. This church should not even be big enough. Yeah. Yeah. Not even for a prayer meeting, this church shouldn't be big enough. 
We ought to have a huge ministry, man. Thousands of people in this city who are grateful. You with me for what this church has done for them in this city? Hmm? You with me? That's what it should be like. That's why I said, you know, tonight earlier, I said, you know what? There's times we have to call those things that be not as though they were because we can't look at it in the natural. Because you look at it in the natural, guess what's going to happen? You're going to get angry. You're going to get resentful. When you look at people who are prospering that hurt you, huh? Mm -hmm. people in your past, people that, you know, whoever it is that done you wrong, and you see them, now they're prospering. You, you, you know what it's like, ladies? It's like, say, for instance, your husband went on, divorced you, left you with kids on welfare and food stamps, went on and got a great job, met a, met a, met a beautiful, younger, healthy woman. Hmm? And you see a man holding hands at the mall. They're laughing and having a great time, and you're, you're there for the free treats, you know? And they're shopping, man, with bags, happy, and they have a beautiful home over in my side. And, and God's like, <clears throat> I want you to forgive them. I want you just to let it go. <clears throat> yeah. The way I forgave you. I think that's where. The catch, that's the catch right there. Is that we're to forgive the way God forgave us. That's the hard part. Because <clears throat> I want to, resentment is a, an emotion. Anger is an emotion. And I'm feeling angry for this. I'm feeling angry. Sometimes even when you're saved, even when you're in the ministry, you, you feel these feelings because it's not like we're robots. You with me? You're human, you're flesh and blood. And you have feelings too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. As a Christian, you're serving the Lord, you're called to forgive and all this, but don't you have feelings too? Yeah. You don't feel emotion, you don't feel resentment, you don't you don't feel anger. All of us do. Right. Yeah. And it's learning how to deal with those, man, and learning how to to get in God's word and say, God, I this is every duty. This is heavy. You're asking me to do something, God. I don't think I can do. Because I want to give him a knuckle sandwich. <laughs> hmm? yeah. Whoever it is. Maybe a sister or a brother you've helped. Mm -hmm. Physical. I mean, a natural brother or sister. And they moved on with their lives and they don't care nothing about you. Don't even, you know what I mean? Or your children. I remember one time Sister Angie telling me, and she was crying. And she was saying, my kids don't even... She said, Vince, I didn't even, Pastor, I didn't even get one Mother's Day call. I didn't even get one, one happy Mother's Day for my children. You with me? Mm -hmm. And she was broken about it. She was hurt about it. And I, you know what I mean? And it's like, you know, but, and you know what? You got to forgive, sis, because they're lost. They're drunk. Yeah. They're messed yeah. up. You know? They will one day. <coughs> yeah. Even if it's at your funeral. They will one day repent to you. They will one day say they're sorry. Even if you go home and be with the Lord, and years later they repent in their house and their sin, and they ask God's forgiveness. You may never see it, but it'll happen if you just forgive. Keep that heart of forgiveness open. You with me? And it's, you know, <coughs> it's, it's a hard thing. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. He said, um, letting go of both the wrong, the wrong that they've done, and the resentment. <coughs> I guess from this, it's two different things. Because they've done you wrong, and then you're also resentful of what they've done to you. The definition of the word to forgive. And I've talked about this many times, but the definition was to stop feeling angry or resentful towards someone for an, for an offense, a flaw, 
or a, a mistake for an offense, a flaw. Do you remember this? The other day I was preaching on Jeremiah 18 where he went to the potter's house. God said, I want you to go to the potter's house, Jeremiah. I want to show you something there. And he said, I went to the potter's house and I seen the potter making a um, vessel. He said, and when he made the vessel, he was almost done, but he noticed a flaw. Something wrong with that in that vessel. It says, so he crushed it and then he started all over again. See, forgiveness is, 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 is letting go of anger and resentment towards somebody for an offense or a flaw. And flaws are things in our lives that maybe we didn't, we didn't uh, really put there. It just came because of somebody else's mistake, because of the way you were raised, because of somebody who hurt you. You with me? A flaw can be something that, you know what I mean, that somebody did towards you. And it's really hard to forgive because if they verbally abused you, if they physically abused you, or if they sexually abused you, I mean, you know, that's pretty hard to forgive something like that. Yeah. You hurt me. You with me? I got friends. I got several friends who are ministers today. Some of them aren't. Some of them are still lost and drunkards because a man hurt these men. Some man somewhere, not the same guy, but different men molested these, bo these boys, these little boys when they're little kids. Could you imagine that, guys? I can't even imagine something like that. Yeah. For men to be so sick that they would turn and molest a little boy. And for these little boys to grow up and so angry and so bitter and so full of rage and, and resentment towards that individual, either they kill them or either they end up killing somebody else or either their lives are end up a mess because of a flaw somebody else put there in our lives. Hello? Mm -hmm. Never asked for that. They didn't yeah. invite it. They didn't say, hey, I want to be molested. I want to try this homosexuality stuff. Yeah. It was a flaw. Somebody else caused it. You with me? And God tells us to forgive. How do you deal with that? I know somebody in church today that's in and out for years and years since we've had our, started our ministry. They came to our city. They were in our church. They're in Denver now. And they can't get rid of this thing in their lives because of what some man did to them when they were a little boy. How do you let go of something like that? How do you forgive? Two brothers, one became a minister, one became just an addict, a drunkard. You with me? You ever heard that story where the guy says his father was, the two boys said their father was an alcoholic? And the guy said, I watched my dad drink. Every day I watched him abuse my mother. I watched him do all this and do all that. And he grew up and became successful and never drank a drink in his life and was successful. And they said, why, why did you do that? And he said, well, what other choice did I have? Well, his other brother, same house, same beating, same this and that, grew up to be a drunkard, grew up to be abusive, grew up to do the same thing to his wife and kids. And they said, why? And he said, well, what other choice did I have? Look at the way I was raised. Why two different outcomes? Why two different things? You with me? Because each and every one of us have a choice. Each and every one of us as Christians, we've been hurt. We've been, I could have quit ministry a long time ago. Yeah. And I said, you know what? You know the reason why Pastor uh, Ed quit ministry? And I, I know it's not the sole reason. But you know what, one of the reasons that he quit ministry because of the men's home. And he hated the men's home. I don't know, really know the story. I know he was angry, resentful, and said, I will never work with a men's home again. Guess what he's doing today? <laughs> he's the overseer of our men's home in Denver. But he backs it for 14 years, angry at the ministry, angry at the people, angry at the men's home. Turned to drinking, turned to different things. And for 14 years of his life, resentful and angry. So uh, resentful and angry. See, when you're when you have unforgiveness in your life, you know what happened to him? He had eight major diseases in his life. Hello? Eight major diseases that left him a cripple, broken back, 
on, on all kinds of medications. And he ends up in Denver at Pastor Ray's church. And Pastor Ray got, got him saved, got him right with God again, and healed him of every one of those diseases. You see, Pastor Ed now, he walks a little slow, it's because he's in his 70s. <laughs> but that broken back was healed. Yeah. All the medication is off. You with me? His life has been restored, but I guarantee you if he came and ministered tonight, he would tell you I had to forgive. I had to forgive not for their sake, but for my sake. I had to forgive not for their health, but for my health, for the well-being of my family and my, my Christianity. I had to forgive or I would have died bitter. Because the devil uses people, man. He uses people. Sometimes he uses us. Right. Hmm? And we don't see it sometimes. Hmm? Even Christians sometimes they'll use them. Huh? Yeah. Oh dear Lord, I put. <laughs> Check this out in Luke chapter 17. Turn to Luke 17. Luke chapter 17, and I think we're in verse 3, I think, maybe 2. Starts just a couple verses here. He says this, pay attention and always be on guard. Pay attention, oh yeah, and always be on guard. He says, looking out for one another. Amen? Amen. I mean, no, we're supposed to be, remember I told you, we're the gap standers, man. We're the ones that are standing in the gap for each other. We're not supposed to be looking out for offenses towards each other, looking out for one another. He said, if your brother sins against, if your brother sins and, and uh, disregards God's pre precepts, in other words, if he sins against you and he's not doing what he should be doing as a Christian, he's not obeying the word of God. He says, solemnly warn him, which means in the King James, rebuke him. You can't rebuke somebody. What did he say the case of rebuking somebody was? He said, one, that they're sinning. Hello? He gave you the wisdom, the diff, he gave you the knowledge of good and evil. Huh? You know what sin is, right? How many of you need to be taught what sin is? Hello? We know what sin is. Yeah. We don't need to be taught, you know, well, what, what is sin against, again, Pastor? No, you know what sin is. Don't look at me like that, right? We know what sin is. If your brother sins, and he breaks the law of God and the word of God, which you know to be true. He says, warn him, bro. Rebuke him. Hmm? He says, warn him. And if he repents and changes, if he repents and changes, Forgive him. Huh? If he repents and changes. Now, I want, to, I want to just stop there for a minute because he said, if this person comes to you and says, I am so sorry, Gina. I know that I shouldn't have said that to you. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. The Bible says you're, com you're commanded to forgive that brother. Hmm? Yeah. If they come to you and they say, how many, but how many do that? How many people have ever hurt you and they don't come and ask you for forgiveness? At least I don't see it. Right. You know how many people have done me wrong and not, not you know what I mean? How many of you hurt me the other day when I said, you know what? What's funny about it is that when I was talking about my granddaughter, Alexis, I said, my granddaughter is 14 years old, 14 years old. And she's one of the only people that, 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 that you know, not that she sinned or did it wrong against me, but maybe even if she did sin, she asked me, forgive me. Or, I'm sorry. 
And several times, Nay said, she's come to me and she, and she writes me in Texas. And she says, Grandpa, I'm so sorry for the people, the way they treated you. I'm so sorry that they hurt you, Grandpa. Grandpa, forgive them. Grandpa, don't let it get you down. Keep your chin up. You know, she'll say stuff like that. And I was like, oh, how cute. And she's one of the only ones that have ever done stuff like that. And I'm, this is from a, a then 13, 12 year old. You don't hear a lot of people say, you know what, I'm sorry, Pastor. I come back to the church, forgive me. You know what keeps them away? The spirit of pride. Yeah. Going back there. I'm going to tell Pastor Susan I'm sorry. Yeah. Huh? Come on. I ain't going to repent. I ain't going to, I ain't going to, what are they going to think of me? I ain't going to look like a, a fool. You're going to fool anyway. I'd rather be right with my parents. I'd rather be right with my pastors than anybody else in this world. Because I know it brings honor if I do. Honor from who, man? Honor from God. God said in his word, honor your father and your mother. That's why if I ever talk to kids or I'll tell them, you, know, you need to obey. Yeah, but you don't know who my dad is. You don't know what my dad does. You don't know. I didn't ask you what he did. I didn't ask you. I just said honor him. Because if you honor him and you, you, you with me, then God's going to bless you. He said, because what? It's the first and greatest commandment with a promise that you'll live a long life and that all will go well with you. It's the same thing for your pastors. Honor your spiritual father and mother. Hmm? That you might live a long and productive life that all may go well with you. It's the first and greatest commandment with a promise. You with me? And man, I, I don't think we've ever, you know, one time, you know, Brother Mike from Abundant Life? Mm -hmm. Mike and Pastor Mike, he was a pastor, him and his wife. They left our church years ago when we were on Trail Avenue, you know, this and that, and they took off. And years later, they were in Abundant Life Church. And they began to work in the ministry, you know, becoming one day his associates. Mm -hmm. And one day his wife of all people. We never really had a good relationship where she didn't even come to our church. She just said she didn't like our church and this and that. I said, well, maybe if she came, she at least have a reason to say I don't like it. But she don't come. <laughs> we didn't have YouTube then. <laughs> So she wasn't able to watch it on TV and I don't like that way I'm pretty. She never even came. How could she not like us? But her of all people, years later, this is the way I knew that they got right with God. This is the way I knew that God was going to bless them and God was raising them up because she said, I had to come back and I had to talk to you, Pastor, and your wife. And I want, me and my husband want to ask you forgiveness for the way we left your church. I think these were the only ones that have ever had to come do that to us. And they said, you know what? We forgive you. We love you guys, man. We pray for we, we, we pray for them. We bless them. So man, I, I pray God would use you. God would bless you guys. We don't need you with me. Yeah. So we forgive you, man. You know what I mean? And man, thank you for coming back. Thank you for saying that. And we it was out of the blue. We never even thought about that. But I really believe that that's why one of the reasons God blessed them, God even opened a ministry up for them because their hearts were right and they're listening to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Saying, whatever you want me to do, God, I'm going to do it. Even if I feel, even if it's against what I, my better judgment, because see, that's what gets us in trouble a lot of times, is our better judgment. Yeah. And what it is, is to be honest with you, it's the spirit of pride. Don't know about it, not that I'm gonna do. You don't know, man. There's been times I had to repent to people. One time I had to repent to a pastor. I don't want to say who it was, but there's a pastor. And I'm telling you, we've struggled in our church before. We struggled to the point where when we were on Trail Avenue, we had nothing, man. And we, we needed a hot water heater for our church. And, and man, we got when well, God blessed us. I don't know how we got it or whatever, but God gave us a hot water heater for the church. We were crying. We were so happy. Oh my God, we have hot water, man! You know, and there's other churches about. Uh, well, our church is prospering, 
and our insurance, we've got brand new cars. But we went into a, they went into a beautiful building, and I, and they they tore it up. They remodeled everything, put brand new carpet. Man, they said all our all our worship team, they come in, they had half their family out there, man. About 30 of them all in robes of the same color. So they walked in like that, you know, with robes flowing. We just got a 30 new robes for all our family. And man, you know, and carpet and the in the curtains, man, custom made and all this stuff. And I'm thinking, gee. We, we got a new water heater. <laughs> Made me feel so stupid. And I just kind of felt a certain way. What did it say? That the, 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 the letting go, getting rid of the offense, of the resentment and the anger. Sometimes we get these little, we don't say nothing, but we got these little attitudes. I call them tubes <laughs> towards people. And and God called me on that. He said, son, you need to repent. I said, for what? What do I do now? He goes, son, your attitude towards his pastor and his ministry. He said, son, you copped an attitude and you were angry and resentful towards that pastor. For they're, they're, you know, and, and, and I believe, believe me, some people are out there and they, all they do is boast on themselves and brag on themselves. And, this and that, and we're doing this, and a lot of times you get around pastors, you're going to see this, and all they do is boast on what they're doing. I just seen one tonight. All they do is boast on what they're about to do and what they've been doing. And, <laughs> and, my, and, and, my, and the Lord told me, you need to go to that pastor. <clears throat> you need to repent. You need to ask him to forgive you. I said, what? And you, I don't know if you know the conviction of the Holy Spirit. He don't let you rest, man. He keeps at you and keeps dealing with you. And finally, I had to call that person. I went to see him. <clears throat> and I asked that pastor, I said, Pastor, I want to ask you forgiveness. For what, brother? I said, well, I said, I was just uh, angry, just resentful towards your ministry. I kind of explained the situation. And I said, here we were just thankful for a hot water heater. And you guys were boasting on this and new carpet and new robes for the choirs and all this stuff. And I kind of caught the attitude there. And I said, I'm so sorry. And I began to cry and I said, Would you forgive me? Brother, he says, You don't have to I man, I love you, brother. And you know, God did something there. It wasn't really for him. It was for me. Mm -hmm. I said, son, I don't want you to be envious. I don't want you to be jealous of people. Because you look around and you know that same individual, that same pastor, right? They got a building donated. What they sold, got sold the building that was, you know, I mean, brand new. It was a nice, beautiful building, and they got a building, Gina, and and ours. You know, I mean, I think when we bought ours, it was one hundred twenty thousand, and that's a pretty good deal for this. Mm -hmm. If you go look at any kind of church or anything, you're not gonna pay. You, this would not go for that today. No. They got theirs. Guess how much? One peso, one dollar. <laughs> Whoever owned it said, We're going to sell the building, we're going to sell it to you for one dollar. And I'm like, More of the minister, they got theirs for a dollar. That's, that's cold, Lord. Hello? Yeah. That don't even seem fair. <laughs> I would have paid a dollar. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and sometimes things like that get to us. Right. Sometimes people boasting and bragging on themselves. I don't know, does that annoy you? I, it annoys me sometimes. Yeah. And there's times, you know, I mean, that you know that you gotta just, man, my God, I just I'm sorry, you know, but do you do you understand tonight that he wants to deal with your heart? Yeah. They're gonna be who they are. They're gonna say what they they're gonna boast out of he's dealing with your heart. If he really has you tonight. I'm saying if he really has your heart tonight, he will deal with you. Some of your family members that are around, they got more money than you, yeah. right? I mean, they're, you know, I had to deal with this, man. You with me? I mean, you look on one hand, you have a pastor, 
You know what I mean? And, and they really have nothing, and this and that. One brother, and the next brother, man, he's a, he, he speaks before thousands, tens of thousands of people. He's a millionaire. He has anything he wants. He can buy houses wherever he feels like it. Hello? Amen. And sometimes you look and say, God, hey, hold on, I think. <laughs> you got to reverse it now, now Lord. Right. And I have to understand that. You know, he said he gave unto, unto people the, the, the talents and the abilities that you can handle. Yeah. So to one, he said he gave one talent. One talent. To, to another, two talents. That's not fair, God. Why did they get to try riding with my grandkids? <laughs> not fair. They got two chicken nuggets and I only got one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> and to one, he gave five talents. You with me? According to their abilities. Maybe I can't handle a million dollars. Somebody told me one time, Pastor, I'm praying for you. I'm praying and believing God to give you a million dollars. I say, oh, wait, wait, wait up. I say, I don't know if I can handle a million dollars. We think we can. Right. But, I, but, but God's making me faithful in the hundreds and the thousands. Yeah. I want you to be faithful, son. Right. Yeah. You pay a few thousand in tithes. What? Could you imagine that? God giving you and saying, I want that tithe of that finance you got. $5,000, God? It's easy to get five bucks tithes. Yeah. But if you're faithful in the little, he said, I'll make you faithful over much. Yeah. 5000 was just as easy to give. There you go. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You with me? Because I was faithful in the $5. Because I was able to do that. You with me? And sometimes we, we, we look at others and we get angry, we get, you know, or whatever. And like I said, you see your ex prosper. And they're all on their wife, the ex wife, or the next wife gets the house that you wanted. And the car that you thought was yours. And they have a bunch of kids. They're all happy and this and that. And there you are, resentful, angry, bitter spewing into your children lies about them because you want them to know what a dirty dog he was and you with me yeah. instead of ministering instead of saying god I'm, your your vengeance is yours lord mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm gonna let you repay yeah. you with me and i've got to trust in that and i've got to rely on that and guess what that he said no weapon forged against you shall so prosper I don't know. I take that personal. But he said, son, when they come against you, they come against me. Yeah, that's right. He told that to Moses. Yeah. He said, Moses, they're not coming against you. They're coming against me. Yeah. You with me? And they had to deal with the wrath of God on their lives because of the way they treated their pastor. You with me? And that's why Jesus prayed, hey, from a cross, Father, forgive these these heathen, Lord. Forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. Because if God, if Jesus wouldn't have prayed that, I believe God would have split the earth and sucked every one of them straight to hell for eternity. And Jesus from a cross, crucified with the, the thorns on his head, and he was me holes in his hands and back that was so beat you couldn't even recognize it was a human man. Organs were showing. And he's on the cross. And he's saying, Father, forgive him, Lord. Could you imagine that? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we have some scars, right, from some people. Maybe we have some physical scars. I know I do. Yeah. Hmm? From a shotgun, from a beating, from a stab wound, from, from abuse, from a molestation, from whatever it was. And we got scars and we got all this and from that. And then, then there's no way in heaven that that could compare with what Christ went through. You with me? When he's on the cross, totally, absolutely to where the Bible says he was unrecognizable. You, you know how we have this beautiful Jesus is in the Catholic Church? And he's on the crucifix, man, and he's got a six-pack. His, his, his uh, 
what do you call them? His doubts or his <laughs> pecs are caught. And he has muscles and he's just hair flying in the wind and just so handsome. And a couple drops of blood here from the crown. And, you know, you look at the old man, that's my teeth. No, he didn't even look like that. He was unrecognizable. Yeah. You figure after 200 blows to the face yeah. from, from men that hit you with everything they have, your face would be a little swollen after they beat you with a cat of nine tails and all this stuff that he went through. And then they pierced his side, stabbed him and killed him in his side. And all this stuff. And he's looking down saying, Father, forgive these men. They don't know what they're doing, God. Huh? And I'm like, man, God, if you can do that. Uh, how is it so hard for us to forgive? Others, their, their stuff. Right. Hmm? Yeah. Even if he sins against you seven times, he said one time forgive. Okay, we can do that. But seven times in a day? Hello? Yeah. It says, <laughs> and returns. Now this is where, and returns to, to you seven times. Seven times and says, I repent. He says, he said, if you want, you can forgive him. Mm -hmm. My Bible says, the Amplified says, if he said I he said you must forgive him. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Right. You must forgive him. And it says in the Amplified, that is give up resentment. And uh, and consider the off the offense. Um, oh wow! What happened there? Oh, consider the offense. He says, uh, recoiled. Is that what it says? Recalled. Recalled. And what? And annulled. Consider the offense. Recalled and annulled. <laughs> Amen? Amen. And then he says the the uh, the apostles said to him said to the Lord, <laughs> increase our faith. Amen. He says for uh, increase our faith, our ability. This is what they were saying. Increase our faith, our ability. To to uh, confident to confidently trust in God and His power to confident to the ability to confidently trust in God and His power increase our faith God and I said this I said you know what no other place in the Bible did they ever ask for God to increase their faith and I know sometimes we pray that way. Sometimes I'll listen. Some people will pray that way even here. Oh, Lord, increase our faith to win souls. Increase our faith so that we can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Increase our faith so we can have faith like it'll move mountains and all this stuff. And the apostles never prayed for that kind of faith. They said in the area of forgiveness, oh, my gosh, increase our faith. I don't know. This is heavy duty, Lord. How many know this is this is heavy? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's hard. You with me? Because you start feeling a certain way. I thank God for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. I thank God that I don't have to feel resentment. I don't have to feel anger towards a certain individual, towards people. That I can say, Lord, I forgive them. The way you forgave me, Lord, because because think about this. How many times has he forgiven you? Now, he's forgiven you once, that's one thing, right? right? But I don't know that anybody in here could say that you 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 haven't sinned seven times. Yeah. How long have you been saved? If maybe seven minutes, then I could say, well, I, I can understand that, but you've been <laughs> saved for a few years, a decade, twenty years. Mm -hmm. And how many know we've done some pretty dumb things in our lives? We've sinned against God, we've run against his commandments. How many of you know what the Bible says not to do, and yet we find ourselves doing? Yeah. 
Hello? Even if it's not shooting dope, you know what I mean? There I am. I'm not a heroin addict, Lord. Yeah, but mijo, look at the unforgiveness in your heart. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Mijo, look at the way you treated that lady there. Because you copped an attitude towards her because and you shunned her and you acted a certain way at the Walmart. Yeah. You shouldn't have acted like that. Right. Huh? Yeah. I want you to go repent to her and tell her to forgive you. How many of you would be obedient enough to say, Holy Spirit, amen. I'll go ask him to forgive me. You know what, ma'am? I'm sorry. You know, blah, blah, blah. You know, forgive me. Many of us wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. You know how many times the Lord had to tell me, go tell your wife you're sorry. Go repent. And I thought I was right. But any kind of anger, any kind of strife in your home, God says, I don't want that in your house because every evil work is there in your house when there's strife. Go repent to your wife. Tell her you're sorry. Ask her for forgiveness. And mean it. Don't just say it. You know how it is with your kids? I don't know if you guys have ever done that. But we would make our kids, you go up to you, go standing face to face. They're right here looking at each other. <laughs> say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That don't work. And you didn't even mean that. Sorry, just so you can get out of trouble. God looks at the heart. God says, son, I need I need you, daughter, I need you to forgive from the heart. Because if you don't, it doesn't mean it's just a bunch of words and you really don't mean it. So you're never gonna, therefore going to be still under that judgment, under that, you with me? Condemnation. Because he said in, 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 in Matthew 6, right? He says, forgive us as we forgive those who've sinned against us. Forgive us ours. And then he goes on. And I think it was Matthew 6, 15, where he says, For if you do not forgive your brother or your sister her trespasses, your heavenly Father will not forgive you of yours either. And we have no idea what that means. We're, we're, you with me? I think as God's kids, we're some of the worst. I have to not, you know, because they didn't come and ask me. Now, if they came and asked me, see, the person that I seen tonight never asked me to forgive them. Yeah. They never said, you know what, Pastor, I'm sorry, would you forgive me for the way, you know, whatever, like I said, Mike and his wife did. After saying all this stuff about me, my doctrine and all this stuff, how do you dare say stuff like that, man? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. They never came and asked me to forgive them. Yeah. And you know what I had to do? I had to forgive them anyway. Not for their part, for my heart. God, I set my word to forgive them. And anytime I feel a certain way, I have to ask God again, God, forgive me. Because see, forgiveness is not something that I forgive her. Huh? Forgiveness is something you got to come back and, and look at the book again. Yeah. What did you say again, Daddy? Let me look at the book. And I have to forgive the way I want to be forgiven. God, I said my word to forgive him again, God. And again, God. And if it takes me a thousand times again, God, I said my word to forgive him. Mm -hmm. And it's easy when the individual's gone. It's hard when they're right in front of you. Hello? Mm -hmm. You know how many times, I'm, you know, in a marriage, in my marriage, I, not that I, you know, had to done, done all this wrong or anything, but how many times my wife had to forgive me or me forgive her? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. But see, that's why we have a strong marriage today, is because of forgiveness, because of love, because of, we work this Bible out in our marriage first. Right. Hmm? And still, you know what I mean, sometimes she offends me. <laughs> and I have to forgive her. Still we forgive, we, we, we offend each other by maybe just an attitude. Maybe the way she done something, she didn't do it the way I thought her. And I get hurt. And, and say, you know what, I'm, I'm sorry. Maybe she won't even know, and I'm like, God, oh, forgive me. Forgive me for copping an offense. Forgive me for getting angry. It wasn't even all that, Lord. But it's a way I see an offense is not 
that somebody necessarily did something to you. It is a perceived thought that somebody did something against you. It's not that they did it, it's the way I perceived it. It's a, I think you did. That's what gets us in trouble. Sometimes I have to deal with that. You yeah. with me? Well, they, I thought they shouldn't have done that. They should have done this. They should have, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and God, well, I don't know if he does that to you, but he just won't leave me alone. <laughs> serious? You're going to cough an attitude? Serious? You're going to get offended? Serious? You're going to, son, you know what I mean? Come on, it ain't about me coming and preaching or being a preacher. It's about me being a son. It's about, about me being in right relationship with him. Because see, Christianity is more than going to church. If, the, if Christianity was coming to church, these seats would be saved. Because they're here 24-7. Huh? Or we'd go to McDonald's and be a Happy Meal. Or a hamburger. That's not true. A Christian is somebody who walks out their face. Somebody who, that's why the Lord's Prayer is something that's valuable to pray every day. Yeah. And in there is, Father, forgive us our debts. Yeah. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who've sinned against us. God, the way I forgive them, forgive me. <clears throat> God's like, well, still, I'm forgiving them, though. Yeah. But how do you want me to forgive you? Right. Hmm? God, I'm sorry. That's why the Holy Spirit's so important. Because they'll tell you at your heart. They'll tell you. Hello? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Forgive them, son. Don't act like that. That's not my character. That's not my nature. We can't walk hand in hand if we disagree. He said in his word, how can two walk together if they don't agree? How can I walk with the Lord and still be walking against his word? But more than that, against his spirit, against his character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You with me? God, I set my will to forgive, God. And sometimes some things will come up in yourself so you can deal with that again. Maybe I did, maybe it was enough. Maybe I forgave them 99%. Or, yeah. hmm? mm -hmm. I thought to myself, I said, man, you know, when I was at the mall this evening, you know what I mean? I just fell in a certain way. Maybe not offended, but maybe just hurt or whatever. And I thought, God, I, I thought, I dealt with that thing, God. Right. I thought I said it in my mind. I said it. Hey, I forgive them individual. Blah, blah, blah. And I pray for them. Sometimes it just comes up. Hello? And it's just like, man, God, I, I, you know, maybe it's not that I didn't. It's maybe that I just felt a certain way. God, forgive me. God, I set my will to forgive them, Lord. Even if they never come and ask forgiveness, I set my will to forgive them. Mm -hmm. Hmm? And that's not easy to do. That's probably one of the hardest things you're ever going to do. And like I said, when it's somebody that's distant, it's easy to forgive them. But when it's somebody that you live with, somebody that you sleep with, somebody that you birth out of your body, huh? or a parent, that's hard. Because right. you see them. There they go. And everything from that moment on is an offense. Everything from that moment on is taken in the wrong way. God, help me uproot this thing. God, I hate this thing. In the name of Jesus, help me uproot this offense. Help me uproot this anger. And Where did that come from, God? Start praying like that. God, help me, Lord. I don't want to be like that. How am I going to walk hand in hand with you when I feel a certain way towards somebody else? Because the way I forgive them and the way I treat them and the way my attitude is towards them, there's no way you're going to treat me, God. God, I want you to bless me. I want you to walk with me. I want you to, 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 have, to be in control of my heart, right? Yeah. He said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do what I ask you to do? What is he asking us to do tonight? Walk in perfect forgiveness towards individuals that even have sinned against you multiple times. And when they come and when they ask forgiveness, he said, man, forgive them, man. Make amends right there. And even if they never do, because most won't, not this day and age, forgive them anyway. Forgive them anyway. Forgive them anyway. For this is the will of God for you. He wants you to be in peace. He wants you to be in health. God restored Pastor Ed after 14 years of misery. 
He healed him. He saved him. He's, and he brought him back to ministry. Could you imagine if Pastor Ed would have maybe just dealt with that 14 years prior? Yeah. yeah. But so I'm, I'm not saying anything. I'm, I'm not blaming him. Man. Sometimes things hurt us so bad. We get so angry. Oh, that's our first nature is to, you know what, shut up. Just shut ourselves up to, to forgiveness and say, you know what, I'm not going to do it. I'm tired of doing it. Why do I have to always do it? I know you never think like that. But maybe it's us pastors that do. Not going to do it no more. I'm tired of being hurt. And why do I always be the one to say, I forgive me and this and that? Right? Not you, but it's probably just me. God says, "Cause I, because I, you're 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 representing me. Are you with me? The heartbeat that beats in you represents me. Either you is or you is not, my baby. You need to make your mind up because it is a choice when it comes down to it. Serving the Lord is a choice. I'm going to choose to serve you, God. I'm going to choose to do what you ask me to do. I'm going to choose forgiveness, even though it kills me. I'm going to choose to forgive, Lord." I might look like a wimp. I might look like a wussy. I might look like a sissy. But God, I want to choose your way because he looked like a sissy on that cross. He looked like, man, what kind of God do you have that can't even, you know, escape from a few men with nails and, you know, who let himself be crucified? What kind of wussy God is that? Sissy God. Who wants a, a dead God like that? He said, man, you don't take my life. He said, I lay my life down. And he did that for us. He showed us how to do it. Remember, he said, if you truly want to be my disciple, you need to take up your cross, deny yourself, and follow my example. And his example was always not only suffering, but also the glory that comes with it. He said, because if you want to, you want to partake in my, in my glory, you must also partake in my suffering. And that suffering is at the hands of people. Sometimes people we love, hello, because we might die. And, you know, I thought it was just amazing how the man, I don't know, Angela, it was at the funeral of Roman that they said that. He said, Roman knew that night somebody had to die. And he said, God, my son's not ready. Take my life. Let me be the one to die in his place. And I thought, no, I've never heard the gospel explained more perfect than that. No greater love has any man than this, that he laid down his life for his friends, he said. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> that we would be willing to even die in the place of those who we are offended and angry with. And, you with me? Or not serving because we want them to have a chance. I'll take the bullet, Lord. Uh, because God, I know if I die, I'm ready, but he ain't, so take me. I've never heard, I've heard story, oh, take me instead, you know, so, but that was one of the, you know what I mean? Like the most revelatory sacrifices that I've ever heard. And I was just like, wow, that's the gospel. Hmm? Taking your pride and crushing it. Well, yeah, but they hurt my feelings, and he said, I thought you were dead. Right? He said, you're dead in Christ. No longer you that lives. A dead person, you can go up to their casket and you can knock on their forehead, call them fat and ugly, and you, you, man, you got buck teeth and all this stuff, and your mama's so big that when she sits around the house, she sits around the house, and, and mama jokes and all this stuff, and you're looking at them and they're just... <laughs> that was a good one. Aren't you mad? Aren't you offended? Mm -mm. I forgive you because I'm dead. I'm not taking anything. I'm not even here. I'm, I'm with Jesus. And he said, that's the way we're supposed to be. Dead to the to, to, to feelings. Well, yeah, but I feel you're supposed to be dead already. Can you feel? Hmm? And that's the process, I guess. And we remember and we realize and we recognize. Hey, wait a minute. See, that's the biggest part. That's the big, taking the bigger, the higher road is recognizing and saying, you're right. I do need to be the higher, take the higher road. I do need to be the bigger person. I do need to set an example. 
Because one of these days, them individuals are going to look back and they're going to say, wow, man, I couldn't shake you. I couldn't make you angry. I, you forgave me when I was, you know. And it's like seven times, really? Seven times is all God asks us to forgive somebody who repents. How many of us have sinned more than seven times in your person in your Christian life? Hmm? More than seven times? And yet what? We run to him, forgive me, Lord, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm out. Hallelujah. I've been forgiven. I was quick. He said, I want you to forgive that way. Towards people who sinned against you. And they say, Man, Lord, increase our faith. No end right there. God, increase my faith. God, this is hard. Please, Lord, not for miracles, not for money, not for signs and wonders, God, and to make me the greatest apostle of all time. God, so that I can forgive and be like you. Increase my faith, God. Increase our faith tonight. Amen. Stand with me tonight. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I know may and that's probably the deepest, deepest message you can ever learn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God, increase our faith. I forgive them. Forgive them, Lord. Imagine that. You know what? You know what? What they were, what they were preaching and saying the whole time at the, the, at the, the Pastor Roman's funeral. Pastor Roman would have forgave his son. Huh? Pastor Roman forgave, was, would forgive his son and say, you know, is it right? It's okay, mijo. It's fine. Because look where I'm at. I know where you at. Where you're at, it may look like the worst, but it's actually the best thing for you. Because it turned his heart towards repentance. God, forgive me, Lord. Family, forgive me. Mom, forgive me. Brokenness. I'll never be the same. But it's a good thing. Because who knows what God's going to do in his life. And it's like, who knows what God wants to do in your life. But that devil wants to get you with unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. Unforgiveness will cause sickness. It will cause divorce. It will cause everything you can think of. That's what unforgiveness will. If you don't let that go, if you don't get rid of it, you'll suffer for it. Not the other person. Like I said, man, never on. You don't see him laughing. And man, having a blast home. <laughs> New car and then <laughs> oh, it's the jury's over. No, oh, thank you, Jesus. Say, my word for you. Bless the Lord. He said, pray for your enemies. Do good to those who burn you. You know what I mean? Pray for those who despitefully use you. And that's Christianity 101. Then that's Christianity. You know, when you get to be a certain age of mature, then you learn forgiveness. And you now that's baby stuff. Mm -hmm. But it keeps us real. It keeps us fresh. God help us and increase our faith in that God. Father, I thank you tonight. I thank you, Lord, the blood of Jesus. Lord, increase our faith. I thank you, Father, for the ability to forgive. Not just once, but Lord, as you said, even seven times seven, Lord. Father, increase our faith, Lord. Father, for those tonight who have hurt us and abused us and misused us, who've left us hanging, God, Father, forgive them tonight. Forgive them. Father, we set our will to forgive them tonight. Father, forgive us. There's been a few times I've had to call my children. Several times I've called Alicia once. A couple of times I talked to my son and asked his forgiveness. Son, I'm so sorry. Whatever it is that I've done to hurt you and harm you, to make you feel the way you do so that you would walk away from God. And he said, Dad, it's not you, it's me. And ask Lisa to forgive me. Forgive me for not knowing how to be a parent. Forgive me for hurting you. Forgive me for being me. Forgive me, Lisa. She said, Dad, I forgive you. I love you, Dad. And God brought such a bond there in our relationship. And sometimes we don't know what to do or how to do it. I wasn't a perfect parent. I was an ex-gang member. 
I was angry, I was bitter, didn't know how to raise a family, didn't know how to be a husband, never seen an example, yet God required it out of me. Sometimes you could say to yourself, that's not fair, God. Nobody did that for me. Yeah, God's the son, but my spirit lives in you. And he'll, he'll be patient with you. He's long-suffering. Even if it takes 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, a lifetime, God will perfect you in the end. Maybe on your deathbed, God will deal with the last issue before you close your eyes. God, increase our faith tonight. Father, forgive us. Forgive us our sins. Forgive us our debts, Lord. Forgive us our trespasses against your commands, your, your decrees, Lord. As we forgive those who have sinned against us, who have trespassed our wishes, who have broken our commands, Lord, and we said to do as our children or whoever it is, co-workers, or, and they've done wrong against us, Father. We set our will to forgive them, Father, tonight. Devil, you're not going to hold us bound no more to unforgiveness. I speak to that spirit of unforgiveness and I command it to loose you tonight. I command it to loose you and let you go tonight in Jesus' name. And I speak to that fresh spirit, that fresh anointing of forgiveness in your life. Blossom forgiveness. Come alive. Raise the dead. Cast out that evil spirit. Make them a new creation today. Set the captives free, Lord. Heal, Father, the brokenhearted tonight. Open blind eyes, cause the lame to walk and the deaf to hear, Lord. Touch your people tonight, once and for all, God. But right there where you're at, I need you to make a choice tonight. Either you can throw this message in the trash and walk out of here worse than you came in. Or you can heed to the message tonight. And you can give permission to the Holy Spirit to begin to work in you. Set your will to forgive those, even of your own household, that have hurt you and sinned against you and done you wrong. Because if you would do that, God will begin to deal with their hearts. You don't have to do it. You don't take revenge. God said, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I'll repay you for evil. You set your will to serve God. He'll take care of the rest. It gives him permission to, for, to go in and begin to convict their hearts of sin so that they too may repent and one day be with Jesus as well. He said, whatever you bind on earth, that means whatever you arrest, whatever you subdue here on earth and not forgive, he said, I won't forgive either. But whatever you loose on earth, he said, I'll loose in heaven. You forgive them, I'll forgive them. You don't, I won't. You don't want anybody to go to hell because you wouldn't forgive them. Because you wouldn't let God work in their lives. No one deserves to go to hell but the devil himself. God, forgive us tonight. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Teach us, Lord, your word. Teach us, Holy Spirit, how to forgive. Even 70 times 7, Lord, teach us to forgive. And Lord, if I didn't ask, increase our faith. Increase our faith. Increase our faith. We worship you, God. We worship you, God. We worship you tonight, Father. Jesus, you're awesome. 
He set our will to forgive those, Lord. Set your will right now to forgive them. Say it out of your mouth. I set my will to forgive that individual. That person that hurt me, hurt me, caused me an offense, a flaw, or a mistake in my life. Cost me a job, cost me a marriage, cost me a career, cost me a ministry, cost me a friendship, cost me sleepless nights. I forgive you. I forgive you in Jesus' name. Sometimes you just say it out of your mouth and it's just the first step of faith. Because it's going to take a lot of faith to do that. But he said, if you have the faith, the next verse, if you have the faith as a grain of mustard seed, you can move mountains, uproot sycamore trees, he said. God, he said our will to forgive him. We use our faith tonight. Take care of our circumstances. Father, we pray all this tonight. We seal it, Lord, in the name of Jesus and by the blood of Jesus. Seal this word in us tonight, Father. In Jesus' precious name, everybody said, Amen. 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 God bless you tonight.